What's growing on gardeners? It's Tuesday, April 26th, and it is a gorgeous spring day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Many of us are in the process of planting or are about to plant our pepper plants right now. And today I'm going to show you four things that you should do that your pepper plants will love you for. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. The first thing you need to do before you plant your pepper plants is you need to select a location that gets at least six hours of uninterrupted sunshine every single day. Peppers are fruiting vegetables, so they demand a lot of energy from the sun. So they need that full uninterrupted sunshine in order to produce enough carbohydrates via photosynthesis to spur on all of that rapid and strong fruit production. While six hours of uninterrupted sunshine a day is the minimum requirement, eight to 10 hours a day is even better. In fact, this location right here in the dead of summer when days are the longest gets 12 hours of full uninterrupted sunshine a day. Now, if you don't have a location that doesn't get as much sun as my location right here, don't worry because pepper plants come the dead of the summer when the sun is extremely strong, can actually benefit from a little bit of afternoon shade. And if you live very far south like I do and it gets brutally hot, they can actually benefit from a little bit of shade cloth like this. This is a 40% shade cloth that I have linked in my Amazon storefront down in the video description. Peppers can benefit from a little bit of afternoon shade during that really intense period in the heat of the summer. However, given an option, I would prefer to plant my peppers in a location that gets full sun all throughout the spring when the sunshine is a lot weaker, and then later in the summer, give them a little bit of shade cloth for afternoon sun protection, then put them in a location that has dappled afternoon light, because then they won't get as much sunshine in the spring when it's a lot weaker, and that could slow down their growth. The second tip that your pepper plants will absolutely love you for at planting is using the proper soil amendments. Of course, it's always a great idea to use something like this, an all-purpose, well-balanced fertilizer that is organic at planting because it will feed your pepper plants over a long period of time, and it will also attract healthy worms, bacteria, and fungi to your soil because these types of fertilizers feed the soil first before they feed your plants. So it's always a good idea to add these into the mix. However, there are two ingredients I believe really raise the bar to another level. The first item is bone meal. Bone meal is a concentrated source of phosphorus and calcium. So not only will it do things like help prevent blossom end rot, but all of that phosphorus breaks down over time and it leads to wonderful root development and intense fruiting throughout the season. So using bone meal at planting and periodically throughout the season is always a good idea. I always make sure to dust the roots of my plants with this at planting time. And my second lesser known secret is crab shell meal. You could also use lobster shell meal as well. If you live in the south or you have sandy soil, you may be exposed to root knot nematodes. Well, crab and lobster shell meals have an ingredient in it called chitin, and chitin helps keep root knot nematodes away. So I always sprinkle a little bit of this in my planting hole because I have sandy soil and I live in the south where root knot nematodes are potentially problematic. As an added bonus, the shells are full of nutrition that will slowly break down over the season and help with nutrient deficiencies and help prevent blossom end rot. The third tip may be the most important one of all, and that is to put a thick compost and mulch layer around all of the pepper plants. And this has a number of beneficial effects. First, I'm going to begin with a compost layer. I'm going to take this cow manure compost and I'm going to place probably about two heaping handfuls around each individual pepper plant. And what that is going to do is that is going to add rich organic matter to the soil and it's going to, over the course of the season, trickle feed the plants with a slow release complete set of nutrients. And because it's so rich in organic matter, it's also going to feed all the worms and the beneficial bacteria and microbes and fungi in the soil. Now, one thing you wanna make sure before you apply the compost is make sure that it is fully composted. So you want to take a handful and smell it. 
and it should basically just smell like dirt. It should be odorless, and if it is odorless, that should mean it is fully broken down and composted. If it has a bad odor to it, don't use it yet. It hasn't fully broken down, and if there's still raw manure in it, it could burn the plants, and it could also rob nitrogen from the soil, which will add yellowing to the plants, and you'll have to use a lot of soluble fertilizer to correct that. Then we will apply a thick mulch layer of about two to three inches across the entire bed. Now I'm going to use this natural shredded hardwood mulch for that. And this mulch layer is critical because not only will it add organic matter to the soil as it decays all season long, but it will also protect the top of your soil from being scorched by the UV rays of the sun and also promote even moisture throughout the season, which will help prevent blossom and rot. Any kind of natural mulch will do. Don't use a dyed mulch or a rubber mulch. You don't have to buy mulch. You can use chopped up grass clippings or leaves as well. And other things like seed free straw is great too. And the fourth thing that your pepper plants will love is being watered in with a soluble fertilizer. And to do that, I'm going to recommend two different types of fertilizer. Now they have to be soluble fertilizers because they are already processed and ready for absorption by the plants. They don't need to be processed by the soil microbiome like those other granulated fertilizers that we used. And we're going to start off with my favorite soluble fertilizer, Alaska Fish Fertilizer. This stuff is magic in a bottle. It's organic, it's made out of fermented fish. So all you want to do with this is you want to give it a shake and you want to give about a two to three tablespoon pour into a watering can. And this is a one and a half gallon watering can right here. And then I'm also going to supplement that with a little bit of an all-purpose soluble fertilizer like your miracle Grow all-purpose 24816. And I'm going to use this in a half strength dosage. The normal recommended amount is one tablespoon per gallon. I'm going to use a half a scooper, which is um, three quarters of a tablespoon so I'm going to use that reduced strength fertilizer. And I like the 24816 uh, at this stage in the pepper's life because it's high in nitrogen and the nitrogen will help the plants establish and it will green them up very nicely and help them get over the transplant shock. Other than at planting, I don't really use the high nitrogen soluble fertilizers very often after that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up the watering cans and then I'm going to soak the pepper plants from their head to their toe because fish emulsion also works as a really good foliar feed as well. So that's why I'm going to soak them all down. And that right there are four quick, simple, and easy things that you should do when planting your pepper plants that they will absolutely love you for. Now, if you've already planted your pepper plants and you're ahead of me in the season, don't worry. You can simply top dress all of your plants with these various items. Add the bone meal, add the organic fertilizer, add the crab shell meal, and just work it into the top couple inches of your soil. Then add your compost and mulch and your soluble fertilizers, and you will catch right back up and you will be on the path to success. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video or that I use in my garden in general, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront link in the video description. And while you're there, check out my spread shop link for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Dale, what are you still doing on your bed? Dale, it's after 8.30. You're usually up an hour ago. Why are you sleeping in so much? Oh, it must have been a really chilly night if it's so late in the morning and you're still lying around on your bed. Oh, look at that. It got down to 44 degrees last night. No wonder you're still laying around. You're staying warm. Okay, buddy. All right, buds. Let's go outside and go potty for the morning.